ever tried talking money and it's like, whoa, brain freeze, total shutdown. Yeah. Happens to the best of us, right? Yeah. But it's even weirder when it's family, you know. You'd think it'd be easier because it's like, these are my people. Right. But it's almost more loaded somehow. Yeah, for sure. So for this deep dive, you gave us some seriously interesting stuff on how to not just survive those financial chats, but like use them to actually get closer to people. Okay. Apparently talking money the right way can be a superpower, not kryptonite. Yeah. Who knew? Right. Right. So this guide you gave us keeps saying financial safety is like the bedrock. Mm. And not just like knowing there's money in the bank, but that feeling of security. Right. What's the big deal about that? Why is that feeling so important? It's actually kind of amazing how connected those two things really are. Okay. Like when you and some, let's say a partner or family, when you're on the same page money-wise, it creates this trust that spills over into everything. Yeah. There's even research that shows couples who argue less about money. Mm-hmm. way happier in the relationship overall. It's oh. like this undercurrent, you know, this stability that affects everything else. That makes sense. Like if I'm secretly freaking out about credit card debt, but <laughs> I'm too scared to tell my partner, yeah. that's going to come out sideways somehow, right? Yeah. Not exactly romantic. Exactly. And that's where this whole creating a safe space thing comes in, mm. which the guide talks about a lot. Okay. And it's not just about finding a quiet room, right? Wow. It's about making a safe space mentally and emotionally where you're not going to be judged for being honest. Okay. It's about being able to be like, hey, I'm scared about this, or this is my goal, or even I screwed up without someone instantly jumping down your throat. Where do I sign up for that workshop? Right. But how do you actually do that? Right. Because even knowing it's good, money just pushes buttons for people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And what this guy does well, I think, is it points out that while these communication skills, they're important everywhere. Right. But with money, they're essential. Yeah. Like active listening, for example. Which is more than just nodding along while I'm mentally making my grocery list. Precisely. <laughs> it's about really taking in what the other person is saying without interrupting or trying to jump to solutions right away. Yeah. The guide even suggests things like actually saying, I see, or like summarizing what they said back to them. Okay. Just so you're both totally clear on what's going on. Yeah. It proves you're actually present, you know, not just waiting for your turn to talk. I know. I feel so much more heard when someone does that versus feeling like I'm talking to a wall, you know? Right. And it it makes sense, especially with something as like loaded as money. Absolutely. Yeah. And along with the act of listening, they talk about I statements as being crucial. Okay. So instead of being like, ugh, you always overspend. Right. It's, I feel anxious when we go over budget. Okay. So it's coming from your perspective. It's not blaming. It's just about your own experience. Okay. Yeah. I could see how that one little tweak changes the whole vibe. Yeah. It's not about pointing fingers. It's just, here's my experience. What's yours? Exactly. But even if we're like communication ninjas, how do you go from feelings to actual goals that's the million dollar question right going from all the feels to the actual plan and this guide it actually gets kind of down to earth about it okay talks about this thing smart goals oh yeah i've heard of those have you yeah though i'll be honest they kind of make me think of like corporate retreats with trust falls and bad coffee right Right. But how do they actually work when it's not a sales team? It's like me and my family trying to be on the same page. Because even though the name is kind of cheesy, smart goals, Mm -hmm. they actually bring a lot of clarity and like a roadmap. Okay. Which is gold when you're talking about money with someone else. It breaks down to it's specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Lots of letters, lots of good stuff. Okay. So less we should save more. Yeah. And more like, by this date next year, Mm -hmm. we will have saved $10,000. Exactly. You nailed it. That specificity, it's key. It's what makes it something you can actually do. And then because it's measurable, you can be like, all right, to hit that $10,000, we each need to save X amount per month. You break it down. Oh my gosh, yes. Eh. That's where I always fall apart. It's like, I set this huge goal that's super vague. Yep. And then life just happens. And then suddenly I'm like, three months behind and I have no idea how I got there. Right. The achievable part, that's got to be big, right? Huge. The guide really stresses this point. There's no point in having a goal if it's so impossible that it just makes you feel defeated. Right. Like if your budget is already stretched super thin, aiming to have like a million dollar investment portfolio in a year is just going to feel impossible. But it's like that time I tried to become a morning person. Right. Lasted about three days and then I crawled back to my coffee maker begging for mercy. (laughs) 
Some goals, you're just setting yourself up to fail from the beginning. Totally. Mm. And that's why the relevant part is so important, too. It has to be something you actually care about. Okay. Is this goal something that you both actually value? Like, one of you might be really gung-ho about buying a vacation property. Right. But if the other person would rather, like, travel the world with their backpack, the goal itself is already a problem. Okay, that's a good point. It's not just about being smart in theory. It's about yeah. those goals actually reflecting what matters to the it, people involved. Exactly. But even with all that, People disagree. It happens. Oh, yeah. So how does the guide say to, like, navigate those bumps in the road without, you know, the whole thing exploding? That's where that foundation of trust we talked about, like, way at the beginning. Okay. That's where it becomes essential. Mm -hmm. When you've got that open communication thing going, even arguments can actually be productive. Right. It's not about never disagreeing because, like, that's impossible. Right. It's more about how you handle it when you do. So less like we're in a boxing ring. More like we're on the same team, but trying to solve a puzzle. Yeah. Even if sometimes, you know, you get a puzzle piece and you're like, I just want to throw this whole thing out the window. Exactly. And the guide talks about this idea of like really acknowledging your emotions, mm. which honestly can be really hard, but it's so important. Yeah. Pretending you're not stressed about money, that just huh. shoves it all down where it can fester. Right, right. So saying something like, hey, this is making me anxious. Can we like take a break and come back to this? That's actually a good thing, not a weakness. Absolutely. The guide uses this phrase, name it to tame it. Ooh, I like that. Right. Yeah. Just saying the feeling out loud can really lower the temperature, and it makes space for that empathy, which is what lets you actually solve the problem together. Okay, that's huge. And that ties into this whole generational wealth thing, right? It's mm. not just the actual money, but the skills you pass down to handle it. You're totally right. Generational wealth, people hear that and think like, trust funds, fancy cars. Right, yachts. Exactly. But this guy does a really cool thing. It reframes it. It's about the values and the habits that we pass down. Okay. Financial literacy, being able to talk openly, knowing how to work through disagreements. Those are the things that really matter. So, yeah, teaching your kids about compound interest, that's great. Right. But teaching them how to have a healthy argument about money, that's next level stuff. It really is, right? Yeah. Like, imagine if being good with money was just something everybody learned growing up. Yeah. Like, same as how to do laundry or make a simple meal. Yeah. It wouldn't be this weird thing that has so much power over us, you know? Okay, now I'm thinking back to some childhood memories and I'm like, oh, that was not good. Right. But I'm with you. This guide has seriously changed how I see this whole thing. It's not about leaving a big pile of money for your kids. Yeah. It's about giving them the skills to be good with money themselves, whatever that means for them. Yes, and exactly. Then, and that's the real legacy, isn't it? There is this one line in the guide It really stuck with me. It said, talking about money is a way of taking care of each other, even across generations. Hmm. And it really hit me. You know, it's mm -hmm. like when we're open and honest about money now, we're actually taking care of our future selves and the people who come after us. Wow. OK, that gave me chills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've covered a lot today, huh? We talked about that whole idea of feeling financially safe with someone. Right. Which is apparently the secret sauce. Like, it all starts there. It really is the foundation. Yeah. And, and we got kind of practical with those SMART goals, which honestly don't seem so intimidating anymore. Yeah. And through it all, remembering that, like, yeah, people are going to disagree. It's going to happen. It's a life. Exactly. But it's how we handle it that matters most. A hundred percent. And that's what I really dig about this whole conversation. You know, it's not just about the numbers. Yeah. It's about relationships. It's about trusting each other, learning to talk even when it's tough, and just being cool with the fact that nobody's perfect at this stuff. So true. Lots to think about today. Hey. So to leave everyone with something to ponder, I'm curious. If you could go back and give your younger self one money tip, knowing what you know now, what would it be? And how can you start living that advice today? in the conversations you have, the choices you make. Of that. Because building a legacy, whether it's financial or just, you know, life stuff, it all starts with a single step. Thanks wow. for diving deep with us.